Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. In this video, I have a great example of a colony that worked exactly the way that a beekeeper would like it to. And what I mean by that is, coming out of winter, this colony did okay. It was an okay colony. We produced a deep box of honey off of this colony, but if it would have been an exceptional colony or a great one, we probably would have got at least two deep boxes of honey this year. For whatever reason, the queen wasn't performing at a high level, and that was a sign that it was time to requeen. So we went into the lower box under the excluder. This was back in June. This is now the first week of August. And we found the queen and we got rid of her. Then we, let's see, what did I do with that? We put a queen cell down below and one above. Here, here's one of them. All right, so we have a JZBZ cup in a queen protective uh, cell uh, protector and we just put that down below and so we did not come back after we dropped these we dropped one here and then I have a double screen board which I'm going to show you in just one second and then we put one up here in the top and this just worked out perfectly the colony was not very strong maybe 12 frames of bees which is not that strong for doing this in June I expect a good well-performing colony to be two strong deeps at that point or greater. However, this is what happens when you switch the queens up and you have a good queen come back. So we are going to go down into here. And we are just going to grab this frame and look at that. This is what bees need to go forward. We have a little bit of pollen coming in and this colony needs a little bit of sugar syrup. You can see larvae down in there. They're beginning to cap all of this. And this is just a gorgeous brood pattern. I know that this queen is going to produce so many more young bees than that other queen would have and did. And look at that. This colony is going to go into the fall flow that's going to start here in the next three or four weeks with a lot more bees. And because of that, they are going to go into winter with a stronger, bigger population. The only thing that's keeping this colony from surviving and thriving in the next year is just a little bit of TLC on the beekeepers, making sure those mite loads are down and making sure they have plenty of nutrition. Right now I'm looking into these frames, almost empty, almost empty. There's, there's a rim of honey up in the top parts of these combs but that's not enough. We need to have at least three full deeps worth of food for this size colony to go full throttle. And just look at that right there. Look at those pollen baskets uh, down towards the bottom of the frame. That's excellent. And we've got some good pollen. We've had some great rains come in that's really helped us out. And it looks like her brood is starting to emerge over towards this top arm up towards the top. There are some brood emerging. So this colony is going forward. It's going to take a lot of energy for them to be able to go forward really strong. And wow, calf brood on that far frame. And I'm going to put this back together very carefully. It's late in the evening, but I've got another colony to show you, and they're working together. I get this question a lot, Cayman, does insulation help bees? And I mean, I've got to say yes. I think there are variables to everything. I keep most of my bees without any insulation, so you can totally do it without. But I think as time goes forward, beekeepers will find that there are benefits to insulation that save you in the feed bill, honey production, and other things. This is a good frame of food right here. Really good frame of food. If it wasn't for that, they probably wouldn't look near as good as they do. That next frame hardly has anything in it at all. All right, well, that's good. But, but currently this colony has about four good frames of brood. That's awesome. Four really good frames of brood. Here's another frame of good brood. And this is just eggs and young larvae all down in there. And I'm going to flip this around. And I don't know how well you can see down into those cells. Let me angle that. And there's just great larvae, a gorgeous pattern. 
young, well-mated queens really give you an advantage when it comes to everything. Going into winter, honey production, the retard swarming, having a younger queen. And so this is going to set this colony up for a bigger honey crop the following year. The queen was two years old. That was in this one, and she just wasn't as good as she used to be. And probably if I would have requeened her earlier in the season, I probably could have pulled at least one more split off of this colony and perhaps produced more honey too. So keeping queens young has its advantages. Now, just to baby this colony and get it through winter. So how is this configuration going? Now I'm going to throw this colony on right here. And what we have, oh goodness, come on now, there we go, is a double screen board with a deep box on top. You can see some of the bees down below. We have a screen here, and there's a screen on the inside, and there's a three-quarter inch gap in between those two screens so the bees cannot touch each other and exchange the mandibular pheromone, which lets them know there's a queen on one side or the other. Thankfully, in this case, both queens came back. I love this method of dividing the bees up when I'm raising queens. It doubles my chances. If only one of these queens would have come back, we still would have been in the shape that we wanted to have been in. And in a lot of cases, that's what happens. In this case, we had both come back. So let's dig down into here a little bit and see what we have. And of course, on cooler times of the year, these bees up top are going to benefit from the heat from the bees down below. And so we have brood on this frame. And it is emerging out. Good brood on this frame and good brood on this frame. Let's pull one more of these out here if we can. They have really glued everything down during this dearth period where they haven't had as much other work to do but it's exciting to see all the pollen. So we got brood on that one. This queen isn't going at it quite as hard as the other one, but she has less bees to work with and less food resources. So it's imperative that we get these colonies fed up really good and TLC, get the mite loads low. And likely what I'm gonna do is if I find a colony in this yard or somewhere that needs a boost maybe the queens going downhill it's getting too late in the season for, for me to fool with queens or anything like that i'll just take this colony and combine it with one of those and and be in good shape so nothing fancy here just a double screen board two queens two successes and it's always exciting to see this kind of thing thanks for watching this video if you have any questions about what we did here leave them below